While many of us are switching between social distancing and protesting right now, the rich and elite among us are looking on with nervous eyes. And even though the joking calls on Twitter to eat the rich are mainly jokes, the mega wealthy are taking this very seriously. And in truth, they've been preparing for a scenario like this one for a while now. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm Chris Wyden, and this is Misinformation. Doomsday prepping is not new. It's taken on many forms, some laughable and some deadly serious. Many people the world over have invested in non-perishable goods, reinforced their cellars, or full-on invested in underground shelters for the potential apocalypse. There is a lot you can talk about when it comes to doomsday prepping, and I am not going to explore everything today. But it is a topic I personally love, so you can expect more videos about the end times coming from me in the future. Excellent! For this video, we're specifically going to talk about what billionaires or or eight-digit millionaires are doing to prepare for the apocalypse. The mega-rich have access to all the information they could ever want, which means we should start paying attention when they start preparing for the end of the world, because they probably know something we don't. And this is why when I first heard about billionaires building luxury bunkers, my ears pricked up. Oh, come on! In 2016 or 2017, I was working for Matt, Pat, and Stephanie, and on my way into work one day, I heard a factoid on the radio that the biggest buying trend for billionaires had become doomsday bunkers. This luxury bunker costs more than $8 million and can sleep 50 people. And now a few years later, the world definitely seems more apocalypty. So I remembered this fun fact and I decided to do some online digging to, you know, see if this bunker boom is still going strong. Turns out, billionaires and millionaires are still paying out their derrieres to build their doomsday homes. But like with everything else, the way billionaires do bunkers is totally different than the way us normies would go about it. I mean, it's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars? You've never actually set foot in a supermarket, have you? I don't have time. I don't mean that normies can't have bunkers. They totally can. In fact, there is an entire industry around constructing underground bunkers for people across the financial spectrum. Excellent! One of the most popular companies for bunker construction is called Rising's Bunker. And according to their website, they can build you one of their economy shelters for just $39,500. For most millennials like myself, that is still a massive sum. But that's just because our parents ruined society for us. In terms of market value, one of these pleb bunkers is about the same value as a BMW W3 series. Of course, when a mega rich person goes bunker shopping, they don't want no cookie cutter bomb shelter. They're going for big time customization and all the accessories they can get. And companies like Rising's Bunkers are happy to oblige when price is no object. I provide the people of this community with propane and propane accessories. On the less fancy side, luxury bunkers look more like underground houses than they do bomb shelters. And for the folks with more money than God, Survival shelters are basically five-star hotels hidden underground. The only reason people are nice to me is because I have more money than God. In a Forbes article written in March of this year, an interview with Rising's Bunker's founder, Gary Lynch, reveals that the company has experienced a 2,000% increase in inquiries about their services. And Lynch intimates that these inquiries are coming from worried members of the wealthier class. One rich asshole interviewed for the article, who is identified only as Terry, had the company build him a 1,500-square-foot shelter somewhere underground on his expansive Ohio estate. By comparison, I live with four other adult people, and Terry's underground backup home is bigger than our house. But in the world of billionaires, Terry's bunker is small time. Allow me to introduce you to Vivos Europa One. Sounds like a luxury space cruise, don't it? These for by and large, your very best friend. Well, that's pretty damn close to the truth, but instead of floating through a cold abyss, you're six feet under. Vivos Europa One is an invitation-only five-star survival complex. It's so exclusive, you can't even buy your way in. But that probably doesn't mean it's cheap. Each family that gets to pay to live there is given 2,500 square feet of floor space that can turn into a two-story space if they want. That makes it a 5,000 square foot personal condo bunker thing with all the fit and finish of a mega yacht. Each member family even gets to hire their own architect and contractor to build out their living quarters exactly as desired. It's like a hotel where you get to personally design your room and your room is also a house. And as you might imagine, based on what I've said so far, the Vivos Europa One complex is huge. 
The complex was built during the Cold War in East Germany to stockpile Soviet weapons, and it clocks in at 76 acres. When East and West Germany were merged together, the land and the complex were sold to a wealthy investor, who is likely associated with, if not directly related to, the CEO of Vivos, Robert Vecino. According to a 2015 Forbes article about Vivos Europa One, this place is not only enormous, it's basically invincible. Here's a quote from that article. The hardened facility is capable of withstanding a substantial close range nuclear blast, a direct airplane crash, biological and chemical agents, shock waves, earthquakes, tsunami, electromagnetic pulses, and virtually any armed attack. Must be nice. Oh, you have no idea. Okay, so to summarize, luxury bunkers exist, they're insanely opulent, and rich people are still the worst. But let's not miss the forest for the trees here. Banging bunkers are cool and all, but we should talk about why bunkers have become such a must-have for the billionaire class. Since the Cold War, people have been building bunkers in response to the very real threat of a man-made apocalypse. Depending on who you ask, there are a number of good reasons to have a bunker. The most common of which is the bomb shelter reason to protect, you know, against nuclear warfare. But in recent years, the mega-rich have been pretty open about another reason for why they want these swanky shelters. What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? The nuclear threat may number among their reasons, but it seems the primary fear has shifted to something else. As recently as May of this year, many of America's wealthiest people have admitted that the more probable use for their bunkers will actually be to shelter against, well, let's just say, the not-so-wealthy people. Remember that Rising's Bunker customer I mentioned at the start of this video? Terry? Well, he was asked by Forbes what his main reasoning was for having a shelter. Here's what he said. I was never worried about nuclear war when I decided to build a bunker, says Terry. I was more concerned about civil unrest. And now we see the possibility of what we had always planned for. It's a whole different story when people are fighting over food and toilet paper. I don't think it is the virus that will destroy the world. I think it is what comes after. If this makes you angry, it made me frustrated too. But why? My initial reaction was that, of course he should be afraid. You know, the eat the rich mentality. But when you investigate that anger and think about Terry's answer a little more, suddenly reality starts to seem a little scarier. This article quoting Terry came out in May of 2020. So Terry could have specifically been referring to the recent protests and the greater sense in this country that enough is finally enough. You know, the racism, the classism, the fact that the rich take a dump on us every day and then force us to blame each other for their shit. And that's a relatively good reason to see societal collapse on the horizon. No American's life is ruined by poor people, or immigrants, or people of color. It's the rich people. And we all know it if we're honest with ourselves. And to be clear, I don't mean Kevin Bacon rich. I mean the super rich people who rule our world. You know, that small group of white guys that own the massive conglomerates, that own the massive corporations, that own the many subsidiary companies and brands that we work for. They take home millions and billions every year and we're lucky enough to be able to pay rent. They're undeniably the most responsible for creating the world that we live in today. And it's because of all this that I don't think Terry is thinking big enough when he complains about everyone fighting over toilet paper. The mega-rich are so keen on bunkers because they see the writing on the wall. Societal collapse will be their creation. And whether you're Apple, Monsanto, or goddamn Exxon, you know the horrors that are coming because you're responsible for them. The billionaires are the ones lobbying against the effort to find alternative energy. We put people on the moon without using anything that resembles a modern day computer. We could definitely find a way to use 100% clean energy if we wanted to. But the US government doesn't adequately fund any clean energy effort because our officials are paid off by lobbyists to ignore the problem. So what happens? Well, we all know what happens. All you have to do is look out your window. Winter during spring, summer during fall, Tornado Alley is expanding to Mississippi, and the streets of Miami flood on sunny days because of rising sea levels. Terry doesn't need to worry about righteous rioting. He needs to worry about whole countries losing the ability to farm when their land becomes arid. And he needs to worry about other countries being swallowed up by the ocean. Because as this happens, all those people are gonna become refugees and they're gonna have to go somewhere. And it won't matter if you have a wall or a closed border. 
A wall won't stop 10 million people trying to get in. Now the US is like, fuck, we're dumbasses. Canada's like, what's going on, eh? Australia's still like, WTF. Mars is laughing at us, and some huge media is like, well, fuck that. And now it's that time in the video when we get to the meat of it all. Why should we care? Regardless of the reason, it makes sense that billionaires would have luxury bunkers. They have luxury everything! They've been stealing resources and ruining our planet for decades, and life for the majority has become more dismal and dystopian every year. So why should we care? We're powerless anyway, right? Wrong! If activism in 2020 has shown us anything, it's that we actually have power. <laughs> Millions of people continue to march in the streets across the U.S., and they've already accomplished and changed so much. And the key is staying in the streets until we get it all. Yes, I'm referring to fighting back against our racist police state, but also fighting back against crippling debt, unfair wages, and rising rent. The only people with enough combined wealth to really help fix these problems are the people who caused them. And the only institutions that are large and powerful enough to make them pay are our governments. Right now, billionaires are still sowing the seeds for global destruction while building bunkers to be prepared for it. But if enough people demand that our governments take real action, then we may not need to worry about the fact that most of us can't afford that economy level of bunker. These are issues people are already protesting about, and we can hold our officials accountable through voting. There's no good reason why we shouldn't remind our officials that we deserve a real future. Because if we do nothing, we have no future. And that's the info about that.